All right, in this video, we're going to talk about improper integrals. So let's look at the function 1 over x. If I asked you to find the area of this curve from 1 to infinity, the region I would be talking about is right here. And I hope you're thinking, well, that would just be infinite because this area just keeps going on and on and on and on and on forever. Albeit that area under the curve is getting smaller, so adding more area on. As we get further out, we're not adding on as much area each time. So what we're trying to find out is, can we calculate the area under this curve as we approach infinity? So this is really a limit problem. So what is the limit of this area as we approach infinity? So we're going to be talking about that with improper integrals. But before we do that, I want to just give you a little bit of vocabulary. So we say that an area under a curve converges. So this is something we're going to be using a lot in this unit. You'll be determining whether something will converge or diverge. So in this case, this area under the curve converges if the limit as b approaches infinity from 1 to b, 1 over x dx, if we can actually calculate a limit and we get some constant value l. So in that case, I would say that this curve, if we did end up with an actual value that we could calculate, then we know that this curve will approach the x-axis fast enough so that the area we're adding on is approaching zero fast enough that we can actually calculate the area under the curve. We'll talk that about that more, so don't worry about it quite yet. We would say then that the area diverges if the limit as b approaches infinity. So if we calculate the area from 1 to b, the limit under 1 over x if it does actually equal some infinite sum. So that would mean that this curve is not approaching the x-axis fast enough. Those additional terms as we move out toward infinity are not approaching 0 fast enough. So this is just going to keep adding area onto our accumulation over time. Let's do a couple examples. So I'm going to show you these two different rational functions. If we graph each one of these, why don't you take a minute actually, go graph 1 over x squared and 1 over the square root of x. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to graph 1 over x squared and 1 over the square root of x. So there's 1 over x squared and 1 over the square root of x. So I can see that 1 over x squared is approaching the x-axis way faster than the square root of x. The square root of x approaches the x-axis, but it takes a little longer. It, it's not as quick. So let's go determine if both of these converge or if one converges, the other diverges. In other words, can we calculate the area under either of these two curves? So let's do some calculus. And writing to solve an, an improper integral, so these are what's called improper integrals because we're looking from 1 to infinity, we're not actually calculating the area at infinity. We're looking at it as a limit to infinity. So if you do not take this first step of rewriting these improper integrals as limits, then you've just gotten the problem wrong. This first step is crucial. First thing you must do is rewrite this as a limit. So I'm going to say the limit as b approaches infinity, you can use any variable you want as long as you're consistent, from 1 to b. And we're still going to use 1 over x squared dx. Okay, we're just going to find the antiderivative of this like you normally would. I'm going to rewrite this as, oops, wrong variable, as x to the negative 2. And now we'll just use the power rule 
add one to that, so this becomes negative one over x. And we're evaluating that from one to b as b approaches infinity. Okay, then we're gonna plug b in, so I've got the limit as b approaches infinity. If I plug b in, I've got one over b minus negative one over one. Okay, I'm going to calculate this now. Um, negative 1 over b as b approaches infinity. 1 over infinity is 0. Minus negative 1 over 1. So I get a value. I get a value of 1, which means that this area converges. I'm not even going to say the area. I'm going to say that this integral converges. I got a value that was finite. So I can say that 1 over x squared, and this is just our explanation. This is nothing you write as a, as a reasoning. 1 over x squared approaches the x-axis fast enough to calculate the area. Do not ever use this as a reason why a solution, why something would converge. This is just for you and I to kind of have, have some language to talk about, to talk about whether or not this function would converge. So we just showed by finding the antiderivative and the limit as b approaches infinity that this curve does in fact approach the x-axis fast enough to calculate the area, and the area is 1. Okay, now let's look at 1 over the square root of x. Let's go through the same process. We need to write this as a limit as b approaches infinity. Again, you can use any variable. I'm using b because usually we say from a to b, so I'm, I'm using b. Um, 1 over the square root of x, so I'm going to write this as x to the negative 1 half dx. Add 1 to that as 1 half, so this is 2 times the square root of x. if I find the antiderivative. I'm evaluating that from 1 to b. The limit as b approaches infinity. Okay, if I plug in b, I have 2 times the square root of b minus 2 times the square root of 1. 2 times the square root of b, so if I replace b with infinity and think about its growth, the square root of infinity is still infinity. So this is something very, very large. 2 times the square root of 1 is not 1, but it's in fact 2. And infinity minus this really small number is still infinity. So by that reasoning, the 1 over the square root of x did not approach the x-axis fast enough. So I would say that 1 to infinity, 1 over the square root of x dx diverges. And for you and I to use some language that kind of visually makes sense-ish is that this graph did not approach the x-axis fast enough. To calculate the area. Again, don't use that as a reasoning for anything. That's just kind of our own thing to talk about of whether something would converge or diverge. So think about what happened here and how we determined whether we could find the area, whether this would converge or diverge. And let's go back to our original problem. Without actually doing any calculus, do you think 1 over x would converge? I want you to think about it without doing calculus. Would this converge? Okay, let's do some calculus now. Hopefully you just thought about it. I just wanted you to make a prediction. Do you think 1 over x approaches the x-axis fast enough? I'm going to go back to Desmos, and I'm going to graph 1 over x, and I want to show you where it shows up in this graph. So 1 over x is the green one, 
and you can see that the green one is in between 1 over x squared and 1 over the square root of x. So we already knew that the 1 over the square root of x did not converge. So 1 over the square root of x diverges, and 1 over x squared does converge. It approaches the x-axis fast enough, and 1 over x is somewhere in between those two. So is that fast enough? Let's go do some calculus and find out. All right, so we're going to rewrite this as a limit. I hope you've done that, or at least thought about it. This is from 1 to b, 1 over x dx. If we do find the antiderivative 1 over x, that's the natural log of x. And we're going to evaluate that from 1 to b. So let's do that to limit as b approaches infinity. We have the natural log of b minus the natural log of 1. The natural log of b, b is infinity. And if you think about a natural log graph, the natural log graph kind of looks like this. So x, as x goes to infinity, so does a natural log function. So we would say that the natural log of infinity, or as, as x approaches infinity, a natural log graph will also approach infinity. And the natural log of 1 is just 0. So no, 1 over x does not converge. This graph does not approach the x-axis fast enough. This diverges. We're going to talk a lot more about this. Like, So then what's where is it? What's the number? What is the, li the limit? Which functions would actually approach the x-axis fast enough? We're going to explore the heck out of that in this unit. So for now, we're just good with, right now, we're just going to play around with this idea of convergence, divergence. So let's go do an example. I'm going to give you a minute to try this because it's bringing up a lot of things. And notice that negative infinity is on the bottom. So the way I would rewrite this then, only be, I mean, it's not wrong however you do it, but I'm just going to use a instead because a is the bottom number. So as a approaches negative infinity from a to zero. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to let you go give it a try. All right, welcome back. Let's find the antiderivative of this. I started out by thinking that this is an exponential, and if u is negative 4x, but du is negative 4. So that leaves us with this extra x. So this is not just an exponential problem. Instead, this is integration by parts. Remember, with integration by parts, we let u equal the less complicated, so u equals x in this case, u prime is 1, v prime is e to the negative 4x, and v is negative 1 fourth e to the negative 4x. I'm not sure why I crammed all of that so tight in that little corner, but I did. All right, so we're going to use integration by parts. I'm going to write this out a little bit further. So we're still finding the limit. Don't lose that limit. And we've got u times v. So this is negative 1 fourth x e to the negative 4x minus u prime times v. So u prime is 1 times v, that's negative 1 fourth. So I'm going to make this positive 1 fourth e to the negative 4x. Okay, we're not done yet because we need to now find the antiderivative of that. I think what might be helpful for some of you, if you want, I'm going to pull that constant out of there. So I've got negative 1 fourth x e to the negative 4x. I'm going to pull the 1 fourth out of there so it's easier to find the antiderivative of e to the negative 4x. Okay, the antiderivative of that is the same as I did up above. It's negative 1 fourth e to the negative 4x. So here we go. As a approaches negative infinity, I've got this entire antiderivative now minus 1 16th e to the negative 4x. If you're not sure how I got that, then we can talk later. 
we're evaluating, evaluating that from A to zero. So now let's plug in zero and let's plug in A. So if I plug in zero to the first term, I get zero. And if I plug in zero to 1 16th e to the negative 4x, that's e to the zero, which is one. So this is minus 1 16th. Okay, now I'm going to plug in a. So I end up with negative 1 4th a e to the negative 4a minus 1 16th e to the negative 4a. Ah. All right, let's do some simplifying here. I am going to, because I need to think about as a approaches infinity. So right now I've got negative 1 16th here. That part's okay. All of this stuff here, I want to get rid of that negative exponent. So I'm going to move that to the denominator because it's going to make it easier for me to think about this. So first of all, I've got minus and a minus, so I'm going to make this plus, and I've got the a on the top and 4e to the 4a on the bottom. And then I've got minus and minus again, so I've got plus 1 over 16e to the 4a. The reason I did that is because now, as a approaches negative infinity, that's going to help me think about this a little bit more. I probably shouldn't have done that because now I can see what's happening. Anyway, it's okay. I should have left it. You'll see why in a second. That's all right. So if I do replace a with negative infinity, this becomes negative infinity and then 4 over e to the 4 times negative infinity. So that becomes a negative exponent again. To make it positive, I'm going to move it to the top. So do you see what happened? This was a negative infinity. That was a negative exponent. To make it positive, I moved it to the numerator. And the same thing's going to happen here. If I would have just left that in the numerator in the first place, the negatives would have multiplied to be positive, and I would have saved myself a step. It's OK. So now same thing on this one. If I replace a with negative infinity, that moves that e to the numerator. So this becomes e to the 4 times infinity over 16. So basically what's happening is both of these are approaching infinity. This is very, very large. Plus or minus 1 16th is not going to change anything at all. So we know that this would diverge. We cannot find the sum or the area under that curve. This diverges, we got infinity for an answer. Whew. Okay, this is the last one. This one doesn't look like an improper integral at first glance because one of the bounds of integration is not infinity. However, on this, this, um, this range from zero to six, we have a discontinuity. We know that x equals four is a vertical asymptote, which means that's a discontinuity and we've got this graph approaching infinity or negative infinity from the right and from the left. So what that means is we need to break this up into two different, from zero to four, and then from four to six. So on this side, from 0 to 4, we're approaching 4 from the left-hand side because we're looking at that, that left one-sided limit from the left, left side of 4 to see what's going on. And then from this side, we're approaching 4 from the right-hand side, from 4 to 6, so looking at that one-sided limit. So when we rewrite these as limits, we're going to say the limit as b approaches 4 from the left
I am not writing this correctly. Let me write this better. I was skipping ahead. I don't want to skip ahead yet. From 0 to b, 1 over x minus 4 to the 2 thirds. And then similarly on this one, I'm going to say this one's the limit as a approaches 4 from the right, from a to 6. Okay, let's find the antiderivative. So x minus 4 to the 2 thirds, I can rewrite that as x minus 4 to the negative 2 thirds. Don't get lazy and, and stop writing these limits because if you do, now your problem is incorrect. So just keep writing them. I know it's tedious. And if you want to skip some steps, feel free, but don't, don't not write your limit. So if you wanted to skip this middle step and write it as a limit as well as rewriting x minus 4 to the negative 2 thirds at the same time, that would be appropriate. Just don't not write the limits. All right, so if we use u substitution, u is x minus 4 and u prime is 1, so we can just use the power rule on this. So if I add 1 to negative 2 thirds, this is x minus 4 to the 1 third. Dividing by 1 third makes this 3. From 0 to b. And if I evaluate it from 0 to b, I have 3 times b minus 4 to the 1 third minus 3 times 0 minus 4 to the 1 third. I'm going to keep going with this because the, the right side will be similar. Okay, so if I, I've plugged in b, I've plugged in 0, now I'm going to look at as b approaches 4 from the left hand side. So if b approaches 4 from the left hand side, I end up with well, if I just plug in 4, because from the right or left, in this case, if I just plug in 4, that doesn't give us anything that is undefined. So this would be 4 minus 4. So we can plug in 4 here, even though we're approaching from the left. 4 minus 4 is 0, so this approach is 0. And then 0 minus 4, so that's negative 4. So we're looking at the cube root of negative 4. So far, this seems to converge. Okay, let's look at the other part, though, because we still have this to go. So we've got the limit as a approaches 4 from the right, 3 times x minus 4 to the 1 third, evaluating that from a to 6. I should have left a little more space on my left-hand side. I'm going to shrink this just a little bit. So they'll both fit. All right, so we've got the limit. As a approaches 4 from the right. I probably should have done this in two videos. I apologize. So we have 6 minus 4 to the 1 third minus 3 times a minus 4 to the 1 third. Okay, as a approaches 4 from the right, I can just plug 4 in for a and it becomes 0. So that one's all good. Now we've got 3 times the cube root of 2 minus 3 times 0. So here is our sum. This converges to this wonderful expression. In other words, this is the area under that curve. We can calculate it. It approached the x-axis fast enough. I guess in this case it would be the y-axis because we have a vertical. It would be like this. So from 0 to 4, I don't know which way is which, I haven't done the math, but we're saying that even though we're getting closer and closer to this, so this is approaching infinity up here, this is approaching that asymptote fast enough to calculate the area. Okay, that was a lot. I should have made two videos of it, out of that. Sorry. But anyway, here you go. Here's your introduction to convergence.